two pairs of arteries supply blood to the brain. The carotid arteries supply 80% of the brain's blood, primarily to the middle and anterior portions of the brain. The vertebral arteries, which ascend through the transverse foramina of the cervical vertebrae, join to form the basilar artery and supply the remaining 20% of the brain's blood. This blood is supplied primarily to the posterior cranial fossa, in other words, the brainstem and cerebellum, and the occipital lobes. The anterior circulation of the cerebrum consists largely of the anterior and middle cerebral arteries, while the posterior cerebral arteries are prominent in the brain's posterior circulation. Crossflow between the anterior and posterior arteries occurs at communicating arteries in the circle of Willis. This crossflow decreases damage in case of impairment of blood flow from either end. Let's look more closely at brain areas supplied by different arteries. If you need a review of the arteries of the brain, please check out my video on the topic, link in the description. We're going to look separately at blood supply in the cerebrum, cerebellum, and brainstem, starting with some transverse sections of the cerebrum. Note that the first three sections also include the cerebellum. Starting from the most ventral section, we see the anterior cerebral arteries, which arch back along the sagittal plane and supply the medial aspect of the cerebral hemispheres back to the parietal lobes. Next, there are the middle cerebral arteries. These arteries run along the lateral sulci, branching off and supplying a large portion of the cerebral cortex. The posterior cerebral arteries go around the cerebral peduncles, run over top of the tentorium cerebelli, and supply the posterior medial surface of the temporal and occipital lobes. The anterior inferior cerebellar arteries supply the anterior portion of the cerebellum. Depending on the size of the area supplied by the anterior inferior cerebellar arteries, the area supplied by the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries can vary. However, the area supplied by the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries typically includes the posterior inferior cerebellar hemispheres and some areas that will be mentioned when we examine cross sections from the brainstem. The blank white space is part of the brainstem and is supplied by branches from vertebral arteries. Moving on to the next section. Again, the anterior cerebral arteries supply the medial rostral portions of the hemispheres, and the middle cerebral arteries supply the lateral rostral portions. The posterior cerebral arteries supply the medial caudal portion of the cerebrum. The anterior inferior cerebellar arteries and the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries supply the outer portion of the cerebellum, and the superior cerebellar arteries, which are dorsal to them, supply the central portion. The white space, which again is the brainstem, is now supplied by branches from the basilar artery, which is formed where the two vertebral arteries come together. Next section. Once again, we see the anterior, middle, and posterior cerebral arteries, but now we must also mention two additional arterial supplies. First, there are the lenticulostriate arteries, which arise from the middle cerebral arteries and supply the basal ganglia. Then, there are the anterior choroidal arteries. These serve a bunch of structures, including the hippocampus, amygdala, the crude cerebri, the substantia nigra, and others. The dorsal portions of the cerebellum are supplied by the superior cerebellar arteries. In the next two sections, we can follow the same blood supply regions. Notice, however, that in the final section we only see areas supplied by the anterior, middle, and posterior cerebral arteries. The lenticulostriate and anterior choroidal arteries supply subcortical structures. Here's a diagram to summarize the cortical vascular territories. Now, let's look at the brainstem's blood supply. We will again look at sections, starting from the caudal medulla. The posterior spinal arteries supply the posterior end of the medulla. The posterior inferior cerebellar arteries are one of the three main arterial blood supplies of the cerebellum. As mentioned previously, the area they supply can vary depending on the areas supplied by the anterior inferior cerebellar arteries. Typically, the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries will supply the inferior cerebellar peduncles. In about 50% of people, 
they also supply the lower portion of the medulla. The vertebral arteries run on either side of the pyramidal tracts. Again, they are one of the two pairs of arteries that supply blood to the brain. At the most anterior end of the medulla, supplying the pyramidal tracts, is the anterior spinal artery. Now, let's look at the upper medulla. Here, we see that the posterior inferior cerebellar artery supplies the inferior cerebellar peduncle, which is one of three sets of cerebellar peduncles that connect the cerebellum to the brainstem. The vertebral arteries supply the area immediately adjacent. Lastly, the anterior spinal artery supplies the medial portion of the medulla, including the pyramidal tract and medial lumniscus. The next section cuts midway through the pons. At the posterior end, which in this diagram includes a small portion of the cerebellum, we see that the anterior inferior cerebellar arteries provide blood. At the anterior end, the vertebral arteries are joined to form the basilar artery. This large artery supplies the entire anterior portion of the pons. The final section we'll examine cuts through the midbrain. Here, we start to infringe on posterior cerebral artery territory. At the medial anterior end, the midbrain is again supplied by the basilar artery. Finally, let's examine the blood supply of the cerebellum. Again, there are three main sets of arteries that supply the cerebellum. These are the superior cerebellar arteries, the anterior inferior cerebellar arteries, and the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries. The superior cerebellar arteries supply the anterior lobe of the cerebellum. The anterior inferior cerebellar arteries and the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries supply the posterior lobe. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It would help me make more videos. And make sure to comment with any topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. Also, it would be really nice if you could support me on Patreon. Thank you.